It's never too early for a Big East preview. You're locked on UConn. You are locked on UConn, your daily podcast on the UConn Huskies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On UConn your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Little housekeeping, my YouTube support, absolutely amazing. I'd love to have all of my subscribers download the audio version wherever you get your podcasts. It's equally as important to helping the, the channel and the Locked On UConn audience grow. So if you could do me two quick favors, first click that little subscribe button on the bottom of your screen, then head over to Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit that follow button. This way, you'll never miss a moment of Locked on UConn. I can't tell you how much your support means to me. If you're tuning in from your car, once you finish the show, please drop us a five-star review. Good reviews trigger referrals for similar shows where you could get some new audience members who are interested in UConn content. Never too early for a Big East preview. Let's bring in our guest. We had him on earlier this week. Let's bring back the ever-popular... Tyler Cassidy, not that one. This one from Big East Barroom. How are you doing today, buddy? Ever popular. You haven't talked to some people around here, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I listen, I think you're pretty popular in Meriden and Connecticut. Big East Barroom has grown exponentially. You got shout outs from Fanta. Um, listen, you, you guys do a great job. So, uh, and, and listen, if you haven't subscribed to Big East Barroom, do it now. As you're listening to this show, and you're definitely going to want to do it when we start talking about the Big East power rankings, which I want to hear from Tyler. We'll get into a myriad of topics, but this is always an interesting one because it doesn't mean to me power rankings are more as of today. I think we all can agree that UConn is one. Yes. Yes. Where do you go from there? Where's like two through four? Yeah. So I'm pretty, uh, one of the rules I've been going by is if you're bringing back talent like I think if I've seen you play in the Big East I'm really high on you so one team that I'm really high on is a team that's been very familiar to UConn Marquette um mm -hmm. there are very few teams where I know they're starting five offhand um and all start all their five players that they're going to start played big minutes in the Big East last year um with Ben Gold taking over for Oso and then probably Cam Jones is going to take a lot of the minutes from Kolick um so I'm really big on them right now um, I really like Creighton. Who, oh, God. No, who, who is who's your who's your guy that's that's essentially starting for Kolek? Who's going to be the point guard for them? It looks like Cam Jones is probably going to play the point, but Chase Ross will then slide into the Cam Jones spot. Um, and then you have David Joplin and Ben Gold still. Right, yep. I'm on that team. So Ben Gold's essentially taking over for Oso. Um, Stevie Mitchell as well. So, And then Cam Jones would be taking over for Kolek, but – Chase Ross is taking over for Cam Jones. So they're all kind of sliding. I think there's it's fair to say after to Kolek is such a traditional point guard, um, putting Cam Jones with the ball in his hand all the time might be a little bit of a leap. But Cam Jones is really, really good. Um, and I'm excited to see what he does with it now being his team, really. Yeah. Do you, um, that's interesting. Do you think, um, do you think Oso is, the loss of Oso is really going to hurt them more or less than Tyler Kolick. I think Tyler Kolick was is the most was the most impactful player in the Big East last year. I think he just the offense without him looks so much different than the offense with him. I think that Ben Gold offers some things that Oso didn't, where he can shoot the three a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. He's not nearly the playmaker or passer Oso is, but I think you know they'll they'll figure out some strengths with Ben Gold. I think the loss of Kolick is going to be tremendous. I'm not saying Cam Jones can rise to that passing wise, at least, but Cam Jones can score 25 a game. Um, okay. Nice who's who's next on that list? So if you have Marquette at two, I would say the next. We don't have to get it as in depth, but the three, the three, four, five that are going to potentially push Marquette, that are potentially going to be pushing UConn, and are going to make some noise in the Big East because I feel like. We hope that the Big East is going to get at least five bids next year in the NCAA tournament. So we're talking five and above NCAA tournament teams. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts there? Uh, I have Creighton, Xavier, and then either St. John's or Providence. Um, after, I think 
again, that if we're going to go by my rule of uh, returning players, Creighton returns their two of their best players and Cockbrenner and um, Stephen Ashworth. Um, while while St. John's isn't returning a ton of players, I've seen Kadari Richmond do it in the Big East. Mm-hmm. Um, Xavier brings back Davion McKnight, Jerome Hunter, and Zach Fremantle. Um, and so those are the teams. And Providence, you know, Providence has been pesky, and I think I think Kim English is a really really good coach. Um, and you bring back Bryce Hopkins, who might be the Big East player of the uh, preseason player of the year. No, I I don't disagree there. Um, I think that Providence team was struggling to find kind of a, a third guy. And I know that they were pretty busy in the transfer portal. I know I'm kind of giving away the next segment. So um, do you think, do you think St. John's kid has enough? You know, I know they, uh, they got probably the most, I would say the most impactful transfer portal guy. If you're in particular, if you're talking about combo guards or guards in general and Kadari Richmond, how, what do you think that team looks like this year in terms of their ceiling, their floor? Yeah, so I think their floor would probably – you're looking at a team like they were last year, a team that misses out on the tournament um, but is closer to a bubble team. I think their ceiling is they could be a second weekend team in the tournament. I think when you bring in a player like Devion Smith and Kadari Richmond as their backcourt, my fear is the same as it was last year, that Rick Patino gets a bunch of transfers in, ends up not liking his players like he <laughs> didn't last year at certain times, and – they can't get them all to play connected defense because there's no reason to think that that's going to happen. And they're, you know, fighting 500 in the big East and they're fighting like, you know, anything to try to be a tournament team. So that's my, that's my worry with them. Um, I'm also one of the biggest Rick Pitino haters in the world. So I, uh, I don't believe in what he's doing. So, but Kadari Richmond and Devion Smith is a really good backcourt. It probably is the back, best backcourt of the Big East. Yeah, what's that line? Um, Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. When Kadari was in the transfer portal, I was like, thank God I never get to see him play again for UConn. And then it was like, oh, St. John's, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, geez. Yeah. Sounds awesome. I mean, that dude lights up when he sees UConn. So, 25 in uh, a row his sophomore year and <laughs> against UConn. It was crazy. In the in the game that they beat them, um, when Klingon got hurt, he had yeah. I, I did a whole thing on that this year. It was twenty six points, eight rebounds, seven assists, four steals. It was something stupid. It was like the dumbest line ever. Yeah. Uh, so so well above what he normally does. So uh, that's a that's a huge coup for for Rick Pitino. Well, we're gonna kind of dive into old Ricky boy and and maybe some tampering in the transfer portal recap, including some of UConn players. I w- I'd love to hear. Tyler's uh, thoughts on the transfer portal, uh, how, how well UConn did in the transfer portal coming up after this. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for any winning championship is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP, bring home huge wins, keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Hey, everyone. Right now, I'm in week two of my wellness journey, and I can say I feel fantastic. Do you know that the secrets of fueling the world's best athletes can also supercharge the rest of us mere mortals? Take Cam Spencer, for example. He's all about dialing in his wellness, reducing inflammation, and eating foods that fuel his body, all thanks to one of Connecticut's top wellness brands, the Feel Good Lab. Here's what Cam has to say. I chose to partner with the Feel Good Lab because I wanted to elevate my performance, improve my health, and become more educated on my nutrition. Since we started working together, all of these goals have been reached. Now I'm just implementing the strategies that Ryan laid out for me, and I'll continue to find new ways to get better with the Feel Good team, and I'm very grateful for our partnership. That's exactly why I chose to team with Ryan in the Feel Good Lab. They offer plant-based pain relief, top quality supplements, and in-home diagnostic tests to pinpoint foods that trigger inflammation in your body. They also are an official partner of UConn Basketball. 
and now a major sponsor of Locked on UConn. I'm on week two of my wellness journey, and so far I feel fantastic. Ready to join me on this journey? Use code Cam Spencer, K C A M S P E N C R, to get 12% off your order and support 10% donation to Bleeding Blue for Good. Come join me and all the current and former UConn family on a proactive journey to health and wellness. Okay, we're back. Uh, transfer portal recap for the Big East preview here on Locked on UConn. Um, let's do UConn first. What were your What were your initial thoughts? Um, I think Aiden Mahaney was a was a big uh, get for UConn, a combo guard that averaged 13, 14 points a game. Uh, efficiency wise, he he fell off a little bit, but I think that was because St. Mary's relied on him late in the shot clock a lot. They they have a slow style offense like UConn does. Um, but Terrace Reed Reed Jr. AKA Big Hoss. What are your thoughts about Terrace Reed? It seems like, you know, a, a more traditional five than Samson is. Gives you a little bit more size um, at that five position. Um, I think they're going to probably give Samson maybe the nod to start off the bat. Um, and then maybe, you know, Terrace Reed comes in there. Um, I'm huge on Mahaney because I'd watched a few of the MT, you know, preseason tournaments. The kid plays with a fire. Um, yeah. and you know, he plays with a chip on his shoulder. You can tell that him and Hurley are a match in heaven. And while I would never want to put the expectation at this player, cause he won a championship, but Cam Spencer's fire is kind of what I saw Mahaney and some of the, you know, St. Mary's maybe not as abrasive, but just like do anything to win. I, uh, I really fell in love with watching that kid play in some of those tournaments in the, in the off season. So I, and I think for UConn, one of the you know things that uh, Rostin tweets out is sometimes the best gets are the ones you keep, and to keep yep. Jalen Stewart and Jaden Ross and um, Hassan Diara and to keep Alex Caravan. I mean, the, you're returning, uh, you're you're missing a lot of the big players, you know, that are not coming back, but you're returning a lot of the heart, you know, or a lot of the pieces of that championship team. So you, know, you contributors, to, and and you don't want to build a team through the portal. That's what I think UConn's done so well. You don't want to have eight portal players. You want to have two or three. You want to have Tristan Newton and Cam Spencer and then have nine players that are, you know, have committed to UConn from the beginning. I, I think UConn has it right. UConn, Marquette, and Creighton, I think, have it really right on bringing two or three players, but you build it from the bottom. Do you think some coaches get caught up in the transfer portal where – they just kind of want to wash their hands of a bad situation versus there's a great Mike Tomlin uh, quote where it's like, he talks about how a coach just says, well, I can't win with that player. He's like, what do you mean? You're a coach. Coach is coach. If you can't win that player, that's on you. That's not on the player. You're the coach. And I feel like that is a lot of what we see in college basketball, where it's like, guys, listen, it's twofold. The players do, want to transfer because they see more money, more opportunity. I get all that. But coaches also send kid, kids packing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there's no uh, – and they used to back in the day when there was no transfer, you know, portal, right? So – I but I also feel like you're right. I think there's a formula to this. I think UConn has pretty much found that formula. And you could definitely put Marquette and Creighton in that mix as well. Um, but then, the, you know, listen, there are, there are mitigating circumstances. Sometimes you truly do have – to go in the portal, whether it's injury, whether it's, you know, it's not, it's not all nefarious. Uh, but one thing that is nefarious is tampering. And to bring up your guy, your, your best buddy, Rick Patino, who was at the track earlier in the week, talking about how Dan Hurley is not going to the, going to the pros. So we appreciate his, his uh, insight there. But one thing that I don't appreciate, and I don't think coaches appreciate is tampering. And he's done it pretty much since he came back to the big East. As soon as Kadari Richmond got the word was St. John's, I was just like, this felt gross. Um, do you think there should be a rule about that? Like in terms of an interconference transfer portal combat, if you will? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I, I mean, I think there are some safeguards in place where you're not supposed to be contacting, you know, players that are under not contract, but under scholarships and certain situations. But we all know it's happening. Um, you would have to do stiff penalties for when it happens and show that we mean business with it. I, I, I will say, and I, again, I want to be so clear on record that I don't like Rick Patino, but I, I think every coach is in some way tampering or not. 
I, sure. uh, you know, if you read some of the stuff about Cam Spencer, Ed Cooley seems to be the one who got him at, to get out of his scholarship at Rutgers. Um, and that, you know, that, and that's just a small example. It seems like, you know, Patino got Cliff uh, Morier to come out of his Rutgers scholarship too. You know, I think that almost everybody's doing it. And to the point where it's almost, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. If the NCAA is serious about wanting to stop tampering, enforce it. If they're not serious, just take all the rules away. But don't do this gray area where you're not supposed to do that. Ha ha, just kidding. We know you're doing it, and we're just not going to stop you. Yeah, I think it has to be egregious. I think there's, you know, back in the day, they, everyone had a bag man. Now the bag man is, you know, they say, Rick Pitino says, Tyler, I know you hate me, but I'll give you like 10 grand if you can mm -hmm. go tell Mark that I will give him more money if he comes to St. John's. Mm -hmm. And so that third party, you know, goes and gets the job done. So yep. I think that's where we're at with the transfer portal. Unfortunately, I know way too much about NIL. I don't ever want to talk about NIL in that respect again, because the, this, the silliness of, of that uh, is, is ridiculous. Talk to me about Providence. Um, I like what they've done in the transfer portal. I think they brought in five guys. Um, but I also feel like because they are, we talked about them and getting Bryce Hopkins back, they lose Devin Carr, they lose uh, Odoro, but, but they do have a great young coach in Kim English. Do you, I, I feel like they're going to be in the upper echelon of the league. And what I mean by that is top five. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you have them there? Do you think because of the transfer portal and because of Kim English and some of the strides he made as a coach last year that they, they could potentially be in that, in that upper echelon of the big East? Yeah. I have Providence probably around that five or six mark right now. Um, Again, Bryce bringing in Bryce Hopkins. Um, I got to see what he's like. You tear an ACL, but yeah, luckily he's young enough where it shouldn't really hamper him too much. You know, you're gonna bring Jaden Pierre back to run the point. I'm on that team, and then you, you bring in Bensley Joseph, um, who I believe is from Miami. Um, uh, Chris, I'm not gonna say it right. Asandro Jabri and Wesley Cardet. They brought in some shooters, and I think after watching them last year. Um, it was clear that they needed some shooting. And I think sure. Kim English kind of went out there and said, this is what I need. I think Kim English is going to be, and this was good for the rivalry. I think he is going to be Dan Hurley's biggest nemesis over the next 10 years, or as long as Hurley wants to be at UConn because he's recruiting in the same market and he's got that same intensity to him where I think his players are going to buy in almost similarly to what Hurley's players are. I have Kim English as the next superstar in the Big East. Um, and I think it's really good. I know people want to put Patino against him, but Patino's older. Um, I yeah. think Kim English is going to start really – they're going to start going a little bit tit for tat. Um, and we'll see. Providence doesn't like to be little brother for long, and they love to run their mouths, Providence. So It's very true. All of our, Everything you're saying is true, and I think the toughest thing, I think, for UConn, Twitter for UConn, um fans is when providence has a coach that we like yeah <laughs> because kim english is very likable and i think he says all the right things um he's a different personality than dan hurley but i do love his in-game persona i think you know i think his coach his players love him that providence team did remind me of an early dan hurley team that was like a grinder but couldn't shoot mm -hmm. um but would try to kind of out muscle you uh so if they do get some shooting if they do get some some guys who can really kind of stick it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of the next kind of progression progression of him as a coach. Well, um, let's take a break and come back and talk about potential surprises for the 24-25 Big E season. Coming up after this. All right, we're back with Tyler Cassidy of Big East Ballroom. Go check out his podcast. At, on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, uh, check them out. They they do a great job. The ever popular, as we called him at the beginning of the of the program, Tyler Cassidy. Tell me about some teams that surprised. Do you think DePaul is going to be continuing in the seller of the Big East? And also, do you think them and Georgetown and even Villanova, which is a pretty sad state of affairs to have them on the bottom in the bottom of the league. Do you think that those those teams, their success is even more important to the league than UConn's, Creighton's, and Marquette's? 
Yeah, I think the floor needs to be risen. Yeah, I think DePaul can't be the worst team in college basketball again. Um, I I don't mean this in a rude way, and I'm sure that the 12 transfers are nice guys, and they'll I'll I'll have a favorite eventually. I have no reason to believe that DePaul is going to win a game in the Big East this year. Really? I I just there's not one player on here. Where I go. Last year's team had talent, in my opinion. Elijah Fisher, like, it went to Kansas. Like, some of these players, like, went to big schools and then transferred. A lot of these guys are coming from, you know, lower majors and transferring up to DePaul. Um, mm-hmm. They tried the transferring down to DePaul, and that didn't work either. So maybe you're going to get some hungry players. I think DePaul is going to be bad. Um I know that it's not popular because he's made so many enemies. I believe in Ed Cooley um, to some extent. And when you bring in a player like Malik Mack and you have Jaden Epps in your backcourt, I think they'll be better than expected. I think the team that I'm most worried about is Seton Hall. Um, Through no fault of Shaheen Holloway, who I believe is also a superstar in this league, they lost everyone um, because their NIL is just so bad. Um, Mm -hmm. And... You know, they had a lot of veteran players last year, and you bring in newer guys who haven't played in the Big East, and we'll see what happens. You're relying on a couple jumps. So Seton Hall scares me because of their bad, and then Villanova's bad too. Um, although Villanova got great news with Eric Dixon and uh, Wuga Poplar. Wuga, yep. So, they're, I mean, we'll see. That bottom four, bottom four scare me. It's tough, to, it's tough to see legacy Big East teams in that bottom four. Yeah. You know, if, if DePaul's there, you know, if I know they're not going to be it, but if a Marquette is there, if if, uh, if a team that is, you know, not a traditional Big East name is in that bottom three or four in the league, mm-hmm. it's a tough pill to swallow, especially if it's Villanova. Um, and Seton Hall is definitely one because, you know, like you mentioned, Shaheen Holloway is a great story from St. Peter's, alum, great co- college player, um, you know, had a really tough, gritty team last year. They definitely should have made the NCAA tournament. So, it just feels like an injustice, right? That they weren't in, and also that uh, he lost a bunch of players. So that's a tough one for me, and also at the hand of uh, Tricky Ricky. Um, but uh, <laughs> your favorite. <laughs> the one thing I will say about DePaul, and this what's and this is through absolutely zero research, but I will tell you, having covered mid-major basketball, mm-hmm. and if you bring in a bunch of hungry mid-major players to play a cohesive unit style basketball, it beats guys who are just coming in to get a check that like, like a kid that transferred in like Elijah Fisher from, from Kansas. Yeah. Um, because I've, I've seen really good and I know you have two good mid-major teams beat high major teams that have no business doing it, but they do it anyway. So I think DePaul is going to run into some wins this year that you're going to be like, wow, because Chris Holtman is, is a good coach. Like he's not, this isn't, you know, this isn't DePaul of old. Let's just put it that way. So, and I can't believe I'm sticking up for DePaul on a Locked on UConn podcast, but I do, I do disagree to a small extent that because they brought in guys, you know, I think again, 12 transfers is rough. Trust me. I get it. Like, and it's a, no one's gonna, no one's gonna be like, yeah, Mark, you're so right. DePaul's gonna be awesome this year. But do I think they're gonna be zero and twenty in the Big East? No. Do I think I think that that bottom four is gonna kind of eat each other alive, so to speak? I don't think any of those guys, George. You, you're, I think you're right. I'm not a huge Ed Cooley fan, um, but you know, backcourts run college basketball. You got two dynamic guards. You're probably gonna win some games just based off of that. So I'm with you there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the DePaul thing, I mean, be as good as you were two years ago. They beat a really good Xavier team. Win two yeah. games, go 2-18. and 18. You, you can't go 0-20 back-to-back years. I It frustrates me almost so much. I, yeah. told, I won't even count Georgetown's two wins last year because they beat DePaul twice. That doesn't count. Sure. So both of you, be a little bit better. Put up a fight. Beat one of the top four teams. Like, just show that the Big East isn't the top four teams and – three of them can't even get to a final four. It's, we're, we're relying on UConn or Villanova every year, pretty much. No, it's true. Well, 
Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on your YouTube and free Amazon Fire TV channels that part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Before we close out the show, Tyler, uh, um, the top three teams, you have UConn, Marquette, Creighton, is that yep. correct? Those are, that was what I would go to right now. Okay. What's UConn's floor? What's UConn's ceiling floor? National championship ceiling. Uh, floor is a upset in the tournament. I think at this point, UConn is only being based on their tournament success. Right. I think for me, I'm, I'm with you there. I have national championship, and I think it's I think it's final four or bust, but I could see them. You know, it's so the NCAA tournament, and they've made it look so easy. If they lose in the Elite Eight or Sweet 16, no one's going to go cry for us anywhere. Um, what about Marquette? Marquette, final four is my ceiling if everything goes right. Um, I guess I could see a world where they are closer to the bubble. I think they're a little bit more boom and bust than any team because I believe that they're replacing a lot, but I still think that they have the talent to be really good. But I think they're, they have a lot of uh, boom or bust potential there. Do you feel the same way about Creighton? Is it about the no, same? Because I think Kalkbrenner is such a steadying presence, whether you like him or not. Defensively, they're going to be good next year, I can promise you. And offensively, they're going to rely on Ashworth and Kalkbrenner to run the pick and roll. So I think they're going to they're gonna win 13 or 14 games in the Big East next year. Okay. Last one because it's a legacy team, Villanova. What's their what's their big east record next year? Uh eight and twelve. Ooh, that's it might be generous. <laughs> uh, it might be, but I, I really like Eric Dixon. I think Eric Dixon is one of the best players in the big east. People really like Wuga. Um, so maybe you, you could see it a little bit, but I don't even know who's gonna play guard for them. Um and I right. follow this so i have no idea no it's it's so true um this goes back to our the dan hurley conversation from earlier in the week but did you see that jay wright was in the in the mix for a, a stealth la lakers can, candidate is that that's pretty hysterical that's a that's big east bar room right there man that's I, know, a topic. I, think, I think the lakers were saying dan if you don't make up your mind we're gonna make up some more rumors <laughs> i think they really wanted dan to make up his mind <laughs> i think you're right man um, I was on this show today. Locked on sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league find locked on sports today now and available on the free fire TV channels app. that's locked on sports 24 seven streaming on YouTube also available on Amazon fire TV in the free Amazon fire TV channels app. Look, this has been another episode of locked on Yukon for Tyler Cassidy of big East Barroom. I'm your host, Mark Zanetto asking you to stay locked in. Stay connected. Make sure your toughness meter is always rising. And as always, go Huskies.